Black, Springbok, New Zealand, South Africa. In rugby, no two countries, no two teams are greater rivals, greater opponents. When All Black and Springbok meet, much more than a game of football takes place. There's a relentless clash of wills and a test of national pride. There's total commitment and implacable resolve. It's when these two countries meet, and only then, that the crown of world rugby is decided. Tony White up with the play, grabs the ball and bounces over for a try. The ball comes back infield. To Gray, who again finds out just how deadly the tackling is. From the ruck, the South African backs get away well on the blind side. But what's Jordan? He intercepts a pass from Howe, slams on her own incredible speed, and he's off down the sideline for a magnificent and historic individual try. The Springbok strike. Johnston streaks along the line and from an impossible position passes infield to Howe, who flashes over for a good try. New Zealand get the ball from the scrum and Vincent gets it away to Archer, who takes a tumble as Stadium tackles him. With time fast running out, line out follows line out, ruck follows ruck. At the final whistle, the score is unchanged. The test hooter is broken and crowds swarm onto the paddock to congratulate the All Blacks. Right from the first scrum that immediately follows the kickoff, the Springboks show they mean business. A tempo of tension is set for the whole match. The referee is forced to intervene in this, the first lurid incident of the game. Nine minutes after the start of play, Walsh puts a beautifully placed kick high to the Springbok line and watch as our cameras turn to slow motion to see Gray seizing the golden opportunity. He lets the ball out to Brown and he's over. A huge crowd of 50,000 jam-packs bank as the park as the South African and New Zealand teams take the field for the third test. They throw the ball about and it comes out to Jarden's wing. He tries a speculator, but it goes right in the Springbok hands. Rosenberg and Von Vollenhoven make a burst, draw them in, and Lochner flies up to take the ball and go over six minutes after the start of the second spell. There's been much to keep the two countries apart, and in more than 60 years, they've come together for test series only 10 times. The first two of these, back in the 20s, resulted in draws. In 1937, the box came to New Zealand and drew first blood, winning the series two games to one. New Zealand had to fight a world war before it could seek a rematch, but in 1949, finally made the journey to South Africa and to crushing defeat, losing an unprecedented four games to nil. These pictures are of the next series to be played in 1956, and if ever a team was hungry for revenge, it was these All Blacks. Equally desperate with the Springboks for a series loss here would not only be their first to New Zealand, but their first to any country in 60 years. Yet lose they did, three games to one, in front of fanatical crowds and in the face of one of the most dynamic packs in All Black history. The driving, ruthless forward play of men like Peter Jones, Tiny White and Kevin Skinner. The brilliance of Ron Jarden on the wing, the impressive goal-kicking debut of the great Don Clark at fullback. These were enough to set the seal on victory. And yet, it wasn't a complete victory. Not quite. For in the mind of every All Black, veteran and new cap alike, there had taken shape what might be called the dream, to beat South Africa in South Africa. And four years later, in 1960, they got their chance. But the Dewar brand of 10-man rugby they played that year wasn't enough to avoid defeat in two games, a draw in a third, and the winning of only one. Then came 1965. Yes, this time, Laidlaw tries the short side to Murdoch, Willamont, and Bert Russell goes over in the corner. The Springboks had returned for their fourth tour of New Zealand, but they weren't the box of old. Earlier that same year, on a five-match tour of Ireland and Scotland, they'd lost four and drawn the fifth, a disastrous state of affairs for South African rugby. Later in Australia, they'd dropped both tests, and soon after arriving in New Zealand, were smashed 23-6 to by Wellington. Thus, even before the first test, their confidence was at an all-time low, and would soon drop even lower. For the 1965 All Blacks were a team that won't soon be forgotten. Ken Gray and Wilson Winneray at prop, the Meads brothers at lock, Brian Lahore, Chris Laidlaw, Fergie McCormick making his test debut like Don Clark a decade earlier at fullback. A mobile and powerful team rediscovering the 15-man game. Not to be denied, McLeod kicks the ball ahead, dives, and he scored a well-deserved try. The black forwards are quick to the ruck and Laidlaw sets himself to swing play back midfield. 
He gets it out to Murdoch. Tarangi and the New Zealand centre crashes through the gap for a glorious try. A difficult kick for Willimant. South Africa lost the first test and was brushed aside in the second. Going into the third, they found themselves in the unhappy position of having dropped seven internationals in a row. At half-time, they were down an almost hopeless 16 to 5. They knew they had to do something. And reaching deep into their souls, they did. Pulling out a rugby miracle and playing one of the great games. He's over to give himself a try in each of the three tests. From the five-yard scrum, the Springboks try to push their way over, but they're held up. De Villiers to Barnard to Gainsford. He jinks his way brilliantly past a brace of All Blacks to score a magnificent try. And three minutes into the second spell, it's Gainsford who bursts through. Rue draws Bert Whistle and Brainard sails over the line to score. 16 to 8. Now from the scrum, can South Africa score? The crowd is tense. De Villiers moves across to the open. Barnard, Gainsford, Brainard props and dives over to complete a spectacular scoring movement. A scrum. The Springboks run the blind. Gainsford is through, past Willimant, and over in the corner for the three equalizing points. South Africa lead 19 to 16. The ground's firm and fast, and South Africa kick off with the sun and a light wind behind them. Down two to one, South Africa need a win today to even the four-test rubber. The line-out becomes a scrum, and from it, Lahore detaches, feeds Conway, and he forces his way over in the corner for that almost traditional New Zealand forward try straight after when Brainard's thrown a bad pass the snappy bird whistle pounces on at 45 yards from the line props inside Barnard around Wilson to score a beautiful try desperately defending now but South Africa try a tap kick an unhappy choice Barnard runs face and straight making ground but his pass to Rue goes astray and New Zealand winger Ian Smith is in there foraging for it yes he's got it on their own 25, South Africa hooked the ball. The but the All Blacks came back strongly in the fourth test, scoring five tries to nil and winning by 17 points. To this day, their greatest winning margin over a Springbok side. So the rugby crown was once again on New Zealand's head. Its team had gone a long way towards solving national pride and avenging the whitewash of 1949. A long way, but not quite all the way. For the dream was still unfulfilled. The dream of beating South Africa at home. A tour to accomplish just that in 1967 was cancelled for political reasons. More years passed while South Africa looked to its internal problems and then, at long last, it was 1970. Clashes uh, between the All Blacks and the Springboks in that era were the ultimate. Uh, they saw us as champions of this side of the world. We saw them as champions of the other side of the world. Ne neither had been able to uh, achieve, achieve dominance in, in, one's, in the other one's country. And uh, I think to the spectators, the players, the administrators, this really was the, the ultimate uh, of, of world rugby as far as we are concerned at that time. Once again, the box are underdogs and the All Blacks have come to win. The only apparent problem is the absence of Colin Meads out with a broken arm against Eastern Transvaal. But offsetting this is the test debut of the exciting young winger, Brian Williams. For South Africa, the test underway, McCormack takes it first. And this is McCallum, the new cap. He's up to his 10-yard mark. McCormack again. 25-yard line, he's caught. This is Jan Ellis, giving it out to Vasaki on his knockout. Here's Williams getting off on Nomis, 10 yards outside the 25. The whistle has gone. Watch the Villiers on the far side, trying to creep around there. That's McLeod standing up. Trouble. Here's a chance for... It tries it. It tries it. Tackled by Janssen, number 11, and Cottrell's left lying on the ground. The South Africa start to move it. That's Vasaki. And flying down, there's Nomis and Williams trying to elbow each other out. But left on the ground, back at halfway, is Cottrell. Ellis, number 7, right at the back. Muller coming through. Here's Vasaki. Having a drop kick at goal, and it's there. Now, New Zealand getting the ball. Here's a chance for Dick. Kurt Muller. 
Flick the three. And New Zealand are all outside, I think. And it's a long way to come back from 9 mil down for New Zealand in this test match. The 25 line has been crossed. Rocking everyone out of the way. A drop kick at goal. Just outside. But this bouncing ball is worrying them greatly. Here's a chance for Williams to go. With Namus. Let's start chance for New Zealand. Lahore intercepted. Wonderfully. Bates there, number eight for South Africa. Here's, here's a chance for Muller. Basaki. McCormick. Janssen, number 11. Now, this is Ellis. Now, Fasaki. Might be too far. Drop it. No, an inch from the touchline. Um, so very high. No shadows on the ground yet. Lister. There's a chance for Williams. He's beaten Fasaki. Gets it back and there to score. He's come from nowhere. Mr. Charging it down, Cottrell. McRae picked it up, Vasaki number 10 has got him. It's five yards inside, South Africa's half. The way goes Rue, here's the overlap on. Janssen, Janssen with a chance. Come back, come back. Neatly on the loose head side, getting it for him. And Laidlaw, you're offside. This is the first time New Zealand have a chance to even attempt to kick a goal. And that is half time at Loftus Fairfield. New Zealand down by 12 points to nil in a first half sensation. Who wants it? Laidlaw says mine. Williams. That is a great try in anyone's language. Said so went through a gap and then flicked the ball out to me and I uh, ran down the left-hand touchline. And I could see on my right Ian McCallum, the South African fullback, coming across. And I was pretty adept at stepping off my left foot. Saw him coming and stepped inside him and, and scored on the tackle. Ellis is running into the line and now he's rejoining the line up. And you're offside, Ellis. It's a bit of lazy thinking on Ellis's part there. He rejoined the lineup. And here's New Zealand trying to move it. Kirkpatrick. List up, New Zealand. And Rue turning on uh, Lister there, but uh, here's going, trying to set up Williams. Third tight hit to New Zealand, is it? Yes. Dick. Matt Miller peering him into the ground over there. It might have been a bit of obstruction, I think. Here's a try. And this is McCallum from Western Province adding two more points. Neathling getting it away to Vasaki. Vasaki, and here's an opening for Rue. No, come back, not on. So after this test, it will be 14 testers to South Africa, 11 to New Zealand, and two drawn. Lahore still trying to go. Ellis. And that is the test match. South Africa have won the first test. And look at the scene in front of you. I certainly had mixed feelings on the day. Playing in my first test match and scoring my first test try was obviously something uh, to cherish. But I've always felt that the team is bigger than the man. And, uh, because we'd lost that game, and it was the first test loss for a long time, I didn't feel really great.
New Zealand comes into the game with a new determination and an old rugby philosophy, total commitment. Among other changes to the side are the maiden test appearances of forwards Alan Sutherland and Alex Wiley. South Africa fields an unchanged team and their own commitment is at least equal to that of the All Blacks. It's going to be a tough match. Signal the start of the game and the test is on. Another in the centre of the line out there. Try to New Zealand. You watch the pre there about number five. Leap, run forward and jump. See him? But he's uh, Bates lost it for him. Here goes Williams. The Saki's boot is the danger for New Zealand as they lead 3-0 here. That's a better pass. McCormack, this is... Davis can't pick it up. There'll be a knock on, I think. There's a chance for somebody. Williams. Got about 25. That's Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick the try. Bates and then Ellis, and this is uh, Neefling backing his way into the New Zealand forward. And there's a bit of weight going in. Hello, there's a bit of head. Ellis. Janssen. Trailing. The ball rolled forward in the tackle. The penalty kick. Oh, I don't think he did that, really. Setting up Williams. Davis. South Africa under pressure. It's still very strange how the South Africans can get up inside those quick, doing those quick tap penalties, and we'll have a look at them as we go on. They get up inside the 10-yard line. They don't retreat. And the mark claimed by Laidlaw under pressure. <laughs> Lahore is back there. It's not a bad kick. That's a better kick. Here's a Accidentally offside or offside. They're allowing play to go. Williams. And Muller, Muller was remiss in not going into Williams that time for sure. South Africa coming back into their own. Here's Vasaki, the double semi, and here's Janssen, the score. Janssen, the try. McCallum attempting to add the points. He has. Lovely pass by... Can New Zealand get it? Try to Williams. Williams the try. He went through three. Drop out 25. The referee has taken his decision. It's a drop out 25. A penalty kick to New Zealand. Now what are they going to do? They're going to run it. It says Muller. Come back.
Williamson is the extra man. A penalty kick to New Zealand, right and out in front of the post in the 40th minute of the game. It's there. I can sympathize with you, those who were listening at home a week ago to this commentary from Bob Irvine. Namus. McCallum outside him. New Zealand have the ball. Now it's been held up in there. Woo! What a tremendous match this has been. And there it is. New Zealand have done it. We were happy that we'd won the game, although it was only by the odd point and we were happy that we had squared the series and, and then we felt probably that we could start afresh and, and look at the next two tests with a good deal of confidence because I believe we beat the Springboks fairly and squarely and by a wider margin that show, then showed on the scoreboard. The 55,000 crowd fade sitting in the sunshine the box haven't lost a test at Budarasma Stadium since 1910, and they're delighted to find the New Zealand selectors have made four changes to a winning side. Brian Williams has moved to centre, and Graham Thorne to the wing. Colin Meads, broken arm and a leather sheath, is back to play his 50th international. New Zealand have given away the wind advantage in the first half, and McCallum sets this test to light with that long kick downfield, and that's Thorne. Spies knocking it back. That's Lofty Nill underneath there. New Zealand winning it again. That's a good kick. 25 yard, Muller back in defense and here's a chance for Laidlaw. And you can see it's a lovely fine day. Everyone's got their jerseys rolled up. Not for that really. And Wiley, notice how he got onto it. Here's New Zealand with a chance, can they get it out? Inside the 25, Milner had his first run on the test. And kicking downfield was none other than Ellis. And this is Thorne. Thorne up to the halfway line. Here's McCormick now, looking for someone to pass to, can't. Lahore's there for New Zealand, 10 yard line. Ball coming back to New Zealand. No. Nope. Well, good play by Thorne initially. Are they going to run it? Ellis. Ellis kicking through. McCormick. And there's half time in the test. Mostly it's been a pretty tough, even battle. So play comes back with a Fasaki kick and Laidlaw having a difficulty to uh, clear things. And now here's is De Villiers breaking across field. It's Rue giving it to Janssen. This is Namus caught by Lahore. Fasaki's there. The ball's bouncing all around the place and no one wants anything T to win a test place. A tremendous achievement. New Zealand, what are they going to do? Williams. Ellis. De Villiers. Namus. <laughs> and that's McCormick underneath it all. The reason for this family is the closely knitted machine around these areas. <laughs> McCormick under there is the batting ring ram. These loose forwards uh, from uh, Hez de Villiers on the 10 yard line. <laughs> Muller. <laughs> uh, 
And we're watching McCallum trying to place this goal. Nine points to three to South Africa, and this is a great hurdle for New Zealand to overcome. Nine points to three. Pisaki. Kicking across to De Villiers. Thrown inside, but he's out. Come back, come back, out. The penalty to New Zealand will be a short tap, I would think. Yeah, get back 10 yards, says the referee. Kirkpatrick, look how he stands up and gets the ball back to Ehrlich. Wiley, looking for someone to pass to. Williams can't pick it up. Kick through by Rue. Here's a chance for Rue. Muller. A try to Muller. McRae caught there by most of the spring box. He's right on the ball. Wiley not giving up hope yet. Laylaw still running it. And no miss. And McCormack are really having a go in there. Both Namus was a bit to blame. McCormack didn't have the ball. It'll be out and that could be it. That's it. We thought we had the best team available for the third test. We needed to win it. Win it. We, we knew we needed to win it. We were back at sea level, which uh, we felt may have given us an advantage. The All Black selectors have waded in and made eight changes to the side. Williams and Thorne are back at wing and centre, respectively, where they belong. Gerald Kember replaces an out-of-form McCormick. Keith Murdoch is debuting at prop. And Sid Goings finally getting a start at half-back. Davi de Villiers' side is unchanged. Have won the toss, elected to play with the Norwesterly Breeze, which is quite a stiff one today. And Gerald Kember playing his first test match for New Zealand, about to set this game alight. And away goes the kick. Kirkpatrick, number six, in there, very fast indeed. Meads. Sutherland up there, midfield. Well, there's some rocking going on, the ball's run. Here's a chance for South Africa. Miller. Miller's out. To clear. Von Vank has got it. Pasaki. Pasaki, 25. Pasaki to try. And here's another chance for South Africa. McCallum. Now that's right, you have to get behind the ball, the Villiers. Can't be in front of the ball from the kick. That's not a bad kick. <laughs> Mr. Number seven at the back there for New Zealand. Meads. McRae. Caught there by Nell, number eight. Kirkpatrick, Rue, Kemba halfway, New Zealand, can they win it from the second phase on their halfway line, 10 yard, Thorne, Furlong, bumped away by Janssen, Thorne, Thorne, Out to Dick. A great run by Thorne. No doubt about this man. He can really punch a hole through any defence. Mayberg, the loose hit number three for South Africa, packing down there. <coughs> and Murdoch. Fellow. Chance for Thorne again. 
Jack Patrick. The ball's still around. New Zealand driving and playing some great forward football. Moving it on the halfway line. A head high tackle from Rue. Rue offside. But the referee has penalized South Africa. Number four there, Sutherland in the foreground as we come in close now to Gerald Kimber, who if he kicks this goal, will bring his points tally for the tour to 100. He has. Oh, and uh, Murdoch. And now the whole team are having wild swings. And Murdoch and Ellis are having a go in there. All started in the front row. And Murdoch is standing there, number one. The referee now talking to the two teams. And that was not very good. Most of the South African crowd are telling them to send, send them off. Who? Ellis held on to Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick swung an arm at him to try and clear him. But New Zealand take the short tap. Look at that ball. Sit up in the air. And a penalty against Mullock. It's a very long kick. Well within McCallum's range. He's kicked some big ones. That's a tremendous kick. The loose ball, a kick through by Ellis. Good play there by Kemba. And he's up first. Meads. New Zealand trying to control it. They have. McRae kicking out towards Williams' wing. McCallum up there. It's a chance for New Zealand. No one seems to want it. McRae up there, number 11, you can see. Ellis with the ball. Rowe. Janssen. Caught by Thorne. Ellis again. Ellis caught, gives it out, here to Myberg. Now it's Kemba up on the halfway line. Still Kemba, and a pretty tired bunch of New Zealand forwards going back there. And it's half time, and up by 14 points to three. That's the 25 yard line, you see. Just behind the scrum, and it's New Zealand's ball. A whore is, not a, off the, is already off the back. So is Lofty Nell, here's the double, double scissors, for the chance for Thorne. Caught there by Ellis. And they must be offside. South Africa, a drop kick from Furlong. Mayberg, the big 18 stone man on the loose head side of the scrum, lifting it up high there, but a tight head to New Zealand. Going. Going. Williams. And a great try to New Zealand. And he's going to score right under the posts. A great try to Brian Williams. Beating two men and touch and goal. And initially started from the tight head to New Zealand. Thirteen minutes have gone. Williams the try, Kemba the conversion. De Villiers is going to have the quick one and probably put it up in the air. Who wants it? Lahore. It's Kirkpatrick. Grayling's back there. Kirkpatrick. Thorne. Muller. Put out there by Kemba. Bad tackling by New Zealand. Crucial stage of this test match. Ten minutes or so to go. Furlong. McRae. Kemba's up as the extra man with Dick outside of him. Oh. Try. 
to South Africa. Holding it in the back. And it's all over. Our selections in that series probably left a lot to be desired. We used 27 players in the test series. And it has been said that Sid Gowen probably should have played in most of the test matches because of his unpredictability. From my own point of view, he set me up for two tries in that series just by bursting around uh, rucks and scrums. And uh, probably the, the fact that the, the selections were uh, slightly odd uh, made a big difference. We went into this test feeling that we, in fact, we could become the first touring side to have a test series victory over South Africa. There wasn't a question of overconfidence. We were just simply confident in our capabilities. We had one or two changes. Duncan Robertson notably went to fullback in the first 5-8. Uh, I had a personal bother with my knee, but the team felt that they'd come here on a mission. It was a mission that they were going to succeed in. Mornay du Plessis captains his country against New Zealand. The All Blacks are under Andy Leslie. Among other new stars in the team are Grant Batty and Bruce Robertson, while veterans from 1970 include Ian Kirkpatrick, Sid Going and B.G. Williams. The crowd strangely silent at Kings Park Durban at the moment. Hamish McDonald feeding back to Ken Stewart. Going elects to kick. It's coming down about the 10 metres line. He's kicked it, and he has put the first points on the board for New Zealand. The ball hooked by Norton on the halfway line. Number four is Ian Kirkpatrick, detaching. Away past Babel, away past Bosch, 10 metres line, spring box. Leslie, Leslie's kick ahead, Leslie's after it. He's obstructed by Robertson, the, the dive side just missed it. The ball bounced round the post from Leslie. With Paul Babel, the Transvaal halfback, to the scrum. Mona Duplessis, Babel going the short side with Bosch, now out the open side, the kick through, and picked up beautifully by Peter Wood. There's Sue Stazen up, up to Hermesay's dumped. Hermesay's one metre from the try line, trying now is Bolankertia, the ruck forming a metre out. Good work by the Springboks. The ruck forms. All back ball to the line coming back badly for going what a beautiful reverse flick it was almost an instinctive move he's made no error with that one and Bosch has leveled the scores up for the All Blacks now Kirkpatrick and beautiful ball Andy Leslie Doug Bruce now Doug Bruce goes for a left foot drop it's short into the left Robertson Robertson elects to kick for touch Peter Whiting Kent Lambert Kerry Tanner and Hamish McDonald had all lined out the other way and the quick drop out for Batty. Batty has it now. Going round Duplessis. Batty. Batty the little man. Almost indestructible. He's outside the 22 metres line. Good ball. Away goes Kirkpatrick. Running back to go forward. With him is Robert Cockrell. And Mr. Gourlay calls half time in the test match here at Kings Park in Durban. The second half about to get underway. And there's Mr. Gourlay's whistle, and this is a tricky one. It's not going to come off because Duplessis has it. Duplessis, and Batty intercepts. Batty's got 22 metres to run to the try line. Batty cutting inside. Batty, two metres out from the try line. No support. Out to Jeff White. Try. Yes, in the first 10 seconds of the half. Well, Monovan here and got it. It was the batty intercept. He chipped and jived his way up over the 22 metres line when it appeared he was caught by the cover. He flicked it over his head, and there was... The intercept of Duplessis' pass, uh, I guess I should have scored. However, the knee wasn't quite what it should have been. And uh, with the support of Kenny Stewart uh, and Lynn Jaffray, we, we got the try anyhow. Going now. It's gone straight up in the air. Duplessis under it, so is Brian Williams. Peter Whiting has it. Ball for going, the kick again by going. And you saw the chalk, but it didn't go out. 
And it's up to Hermeses. Hermeses running the open side. He's got a full back line out here. Hermeses still going. And he's got Bosch out here. And away goes Eric Kranz. Kranz and Jaffray covering across as was Doug Bruce. They've all... Nicely, Duplessis. Duplessis. Dumped by Leslie and Alice is collared by Batty who gets himself out of the ruck. And now the All Blacks move forward. But it's coming back to Babel. That's Bosch. Whip. Along missing out. Ustase Robertson's in the line. And Hermeses is away again. Hermeses. Hermeses the outside swerve. Oh, fine try, Hermeses. Well, the ball went along, and the orthodox movement from Whip. They missed out Ustazen. Coming in was Robertson as the extra man. And Hermeses had everything to do. He had half the backs to go through, but he did it. Gerald Bosch. He has. What's going to happen? Sid Goings poised over it. That's the quick one. Doug Bruce is worried. There's Kirkpatrick on the burst outside him as Ken Stewart. Kirky straightening up over the halfway, one-handed, out to Robertson's hands a good this time, and Williams away on the right wing, Robertson inside, that's Jeffrey. Jeffrey for the try line, Jeffrey held his pass, they're 10 metres out from the try line now, coming back, good ball, along to Doug Bruce, there's not many backs out here, the kick for Batty's alone out here, but the kick's too big. New Zealand counter-attacking, Kirkpatrick it was, bursting up over the halfway line. Contesting fiercely in the lineup now. And John Williams and Peter Whiting. Cockerell midway 22 and halfway line in Springbok territory. Whiting one handed. That's good ball. That's Bruce. Jeffrey. Robertson. Robertson delaying his pass and almost yes through the gap. With him is Ken Stewart. 22 meters line. The counter. The second phase ball. And again the All Blacks are penalized. Paul Babel to the two straining packs just outside the 22 metres line in Springbok territory. Babel goes the short side and he gives it out to Kranz and that's Kranz's kick. And a wonderful mark under pressure from Duncan Robertson. The short line out by the All Blacks. Back to Williams. Williams now winning the line out. Ellis has it. Being held there. Leslie coming through. Babel has it. He's in field. Oh, the South Africans couldn't control it. Well, it's because he picked it up. Back it comes, second phase. To Babel, to Bosch. Left it out to Westhausen. Westhausen through the gap. Westhausen through the gap. Inside to Whip. Whip outside. Inside to Harvestheis. Can't get it. Whip again. A long pass. To Bosch. To Kranz. Kranz being stacked from behind. To Robertson. South Africa taking it forward with Bonnet Duplessis into the ruck now. Babel working the short side. He's through. Babel. Oh, he was tapped a shot. Trance again. Trance gets it. Trance has got the try. In his first test match, Babel got the ball. He's going through the gap, is Babel. Look at him go. Watch Babel. Is he going to get it? No! It's Robertson has it in his own in goal area. Challenge by Hermeses. Kicks in field. Ian Robertson, he's going to drop. He dropped. He's, he's got it. He's got it. Just outside the South African 22 metre line. The end of the match. The end of the match. South Africa have done it again. The All Blacks started off quite well that day. We were leading early in the game and looking very good. I was doing the goal kicking and I kicked an early goal and then, uh, found the goal posts uh, pretty elusive to find. But uh, latest in the game, the Springbok backs surprised us. They ran the ball and effected a skip pass scored a try and I, I guess we underestimated their ability to do that and uh, that was obviously very costly in the final analysis. Andy Leslie leads 
New Zealand heads into this one as firm underdogs. Among other selectors' changes, Bill Bush and Brad Johnson move into the front line with Tani Norton. Joe Morgan takes over at second five, and new cap Kit Fawcett ends the experiment of Duncan Robertson at fullback. It's do or die today, and 71,000 South Africans have come to watch them play for the series. Gerald Bosch to start the second test. Today's referee, Mr. Burt Poseidon, who starts the match. 14 is Brian Williams. Robertson. 12 is Oosthuizen. Right out here to Pope at halfway. South Africa moving the ball early on. Sit going under this one. 22 metres line. Snayman. Halfway line. Both sides testing each other early with high balls. That one from Snayman out on the full. There's Gerald Bosch who has not had much to do so far in the first few minutes. New Zealand in front after six minutes of play and there's the man that puts the All Blacks on the board. This is Chris Pope from Western Province, his seventh test match. Here's Andy Leslie of New Zealand, his eighth test match. Quick throw in by Batty, Sit going. The All Blacks are showing invention. Snowman under this one. Bush has him. That's 30 metres out. Six is Boland Cooks here. Doug Bruce makes the tackle. Five is John Williams. South Africa driving. Fundenberg lost the ball. Andy Leslie. Advantage will be applied here. Bosch. It's behind the line. Five meter scrum. 26 year old from Transvaal is on the field. Going away to Williams. Mornay Duplessis covering well. Hermes Hayes caught. That's a good drive by the New Zealand team. There's been very little running rugby. I'd be surprised if Bruce Robertson or Oosthuizen, Joe Morgan, have handled the ball at all. Good catch by Kevin DeClerc. Now the Springboks are running it. Hermes Hayes has lost it. 12 is Oosthuizen. Loose ball. Everly is there. Twenty-seven minutes of play. A great goal again. Six to three. Going. Club mate Joe Morgan. A gap is there for Morgan. Joe Morgan. One of the great all-back tries. Joe Morgan. This was a brilliant try for Joe Morgan. It came awkwardly from Sid going, and then the two club mates, representative teammates, and now all black test teammates combined to put Morgan away in a run. A solo burst to the line. A brilliant try from Joe Morgan. Now here's his club mate, Sid going, who'll try to convert it into six points. Loose head for New Zealand. Leslie feeds going. Bruce, Joe Morgan, Joe Morgan through! Doug Bruce, Batty, looking for support. Fawcett, here's trouble. Good work by Fawcett to just put the bouncing ball out. And that is half time. A little chip from Andy Leslie to begin the second half. It went to Duplessis and took him by surprise. Tight rut, this one. The New Zealanders are calling the tune in this very tight match. Shortened line out by the All Blacks. They've lost it. Johnston threw on Baybell. 
and the referee's whistle is gone. Big kick from halfway, 50 metres out. Here's Gerald Bosch. A vital scrum, five metres out, going. Trying to lure them offside. Certainly looked as though Bosch was over the last feet of the ruck. Back between his legs to Doug Bruce. Fantastic. Drop goal to Doug Bruce. The clock shows 11 minutes to play. There'll be injury time to add on to that. Williams to throw at the restart. Babel to Bosch to Oosthuizen. Stamen is in. Dawi Stamen. Duplessis, Fayville. This is in the space. Williams waiting for the bounce. Force it there. Fayville. Away to Bosch. Robertson. What a tackle by Morgan. Straight up crash tackle. Bosch caught by Bruce Robertson. Now Fable behind Pope. Leslie. Pope. Cuts here. Out in the corner. The touch judges flag is up. As Boland cuts here, number six, crossed for a try. <laughs> Leslie to Kirkpatrick. What a run by Kirkpatrick. Everly's got the bounce. 22 metres out. Kevin Everly. A setup for Sid going. Charge down. Cockrell. In touch. Duplessis bustled by going. Kirkpatrick pounces on the ball. Johnston feeds Bruce. Again the kick. Snayman is back. Osborne is chasing quickly. It's loose. The Springboks have a chance. Whiting White says he's done so well in this match. Another fair catch by this big man from Auckland who's proved today that he's not only big in stature but very big in heart to get off his sick bed and play such a match. The match is over. 15 points to nine. And the series is alive at the end of the second test. The old thinking that a Kiwi with his back against the wall has got a bit of grit and determination, I think, came out on this test. Uh, we had Peter Whiting, we had Joe Morgan, Sid Gain, all playing great games, and the team generally committing itself uh, as well as it possibly could. But surprisingly, some would say incredibly, the All Black selectors have once again stepped in and changed a winning team, which makes for a tense start to an already difficult challenge. This could well be the last chance ever to make the dream a reality, to take a series from these Springboks on their home ground. Number 14, Brian Williams. They start the third test. Kurt Poseidon held as today's referee. Williams has kicked deep to Bosch. All right, Duplessis to that quick throw in. Bosch, force it back for his first test. And he came through that test with flying colors. Number nine, Paul Babel. Up to Pope, number 14. Force it. Hermes Hess. Great tackle, Ken Stewart. Loose ball, Bruce Robertson. Try, Bruce Robertson. Here's how it happened. Hermes Hess threw a wild pass when they really got into him and watch for Robertson, towing it ahead. And the bounce was his, chased by Snayman. Bruce Robertson.
Batty after 13 minutes. Whiting's getting up. Sit going. Referee. Another one against New Zealand. Penalty against the All Blacks. Two new caps, the only two on the field. Harris and Strauss propping against each other. Back pass. Batty. Duplessis bounced off uh, Van Heerden's head. Good ruck ball. That's better. Going Duncan Robertson. Batty in from the left. Snayman's under it. Scrum five metres. New Zealand side. Duplessis bustle, but they got the tight head. Penalty to the All Blacks. That's a big one. That is one of the great kicks. 55 metres out. Brian Williams, New Zealand 7, South Africa 3. Punt throws to number 4, De Klerk. 28 minutes gone. Bayfell. Bosch. Whip. Boost Hazen left out. Snayman crunched by Williams. Look at Ken Stewart arrive. 12 is Oost Hazen. Sid going, making a good tackle there. It's going, coming out with the ball. And here's trouble. Duplessis putting the boot in. I tell you what, that's not the first time we've seen it from Duplessis. Now this is bad news. Bad, bad news. That's good work by New Zealand. Duncan Robertson running it. Morgan, Bruce Robertson, force it in. Behind Snayman. And that's half time. <laughs> Two meters South African territory. Going. Speculator kick by Bruce Robertson. Permasace. And he's got the intercept. 30 metres out. Going. Duncan Rock. Whistle's gone. Going. Away to Robertson. Morgan. Borsett's lost it. Interception. Bruce Hazen. Try for Johan Bruce Hazen. Ten points to seven, Oosthuizen, an interception, and away for an easy try. And things could be worse. They are worse for New Zealand. Bosch has converted it. Hit the post. Ken Stewart. That's very close to the New Zealand line, and Sid going, the ball's in the air. Snayman. Out to Peter Whip. Duplessis, Robertson is there. Force it. With four Springboks right on him. Into injury time. 12 points to 10, South Africa lead.
going into space a drop kick coming up Darwish Lehman seals the test match for South Africa Faithful sending the All Blacks back and the match is over the third test at Cape Town has been won by South Africa by 15 points to 10. Looking back on this game, it was disappointing from the refereeing point of view. His, his refereeing of scrums and not allowing Sid Gain to take a kick a goal after the ball had toppled over. We made unforced errors, particularly one involving Kit Fawcett in the back line. All in all, it was a, a sad day. As always, though, past disappointments are forgotten when a new contest gets underway. The All Blacks intend to win this one, but they're facing a massive Springbok pack and an on-form Gerald Bosch, while still being without a reliable goal kicker of their own. And this is where the buck stops. Referee is kept for Zayden Hout. He blows to go, and the test match is underway. Bayfield, hassled by Sid going. Kevin Everly pushing on to the 22. Sid going. He got through Sid going. Tiny Norton in Kirkpatrick. Try. A try for Ian Kirkpatrick, who ensures that he will always be something special. His second try of the tour. Kirkpatrick in at the corner for the first try of the match. And a determined New Zealand team is in the lead. Strauss popping against Lambert. Bayfield. Bosch. Drop kick. What a fine goal for Gerald Bosch, the danger man on Ellis Park. Four points to three. Bush got that one. Going away to Bruce. Joe Morgan. Having a little run. Bruce Robertson. High ball to Williams. Hermes Hayes has it. What a tackle. <laughs> 20 minutes of play. Whiting gets the palm. Sit going. Front there by could see Leslie plays halfback Andy Leslie Tari Norton Kirkpatrick Sid going try try for Sid going the All Blacks scrum machine is working pretty well this afternoon away to Bruce, a little chip through. Bruce Robertson chasing hard. Bruce Robertson's kicked behind Robertson. A dive. A 22 ordered, but the All Blacks are pointing to the referee and suggesting that Ian Robertson may have taken Bruce Robertson out of the play. He just appeared to pull his sleeve. Bosch kicks out. Eight points to three. Whiting has it. That's a big lateral pass behind... Uh, Doug Bruce and Duncan Robertson's lost it. The advantage will apply. Whip. Way to Hermes Hayes. Williams across. A great scoring chance for the Springboks. Kripke's Kritzinger. Try. of injury time in the first half. Ian Robertson from the penalty. And that's half time. Two tries to New Zealand, one to South Africa, but the Springboks with a drop goal lead at half time over the All Blacks by 9 to 8. And the second half begins with Brian Williams just kicking a chip to the 10 metre line. 
Breaks through. Fitzpatrick feeds going. Away to Doug Bruce. The All Blacks are going to move the ball by hand. Bruce Robertson. Frost is covering. Straight to Ian Robertson. Caught by Bruce Robertson. Everly there could be number seven. Kirk Patrick in a scrap here with Mona van Heerden. And Bill Bush joining that one now. And it's all on. So no penalty as a result of that scrap five minutes into the second half. That's the 22 metres line. Doug Bruce, drop kick. He's done it. Drop goal for Doug Bruce. It's interesting to see how Kutzinger lasts in the heat as the match wears on. A long pass from going to William. Kevin Everly. Bruce Robertson, has he got the pace? Bruce Robertson, Ian Robertson, and the number 12, Oosthuizen, took Kier Robertson out of the play, and Kirkpatrick demands that it should be a penalty try, but it's only a penalty for the All Blacks. There is the greatness of this man. And that's the moment we'll reach back and hold forever. Under real pressure, Williams puts the All Blacks back in the lead. 29 minutes of playing time gone. Bosch. Duncan Robertson. Awkward bounce again. Duncan Robertson. A counter-attack. Bill Bush. Sid going. Lost it forward. Van Beek. A great catch by Leslie. Who gets the penalty? South Africa. Penalty to South Africa. No mistake for Gerald Bosch. Mitchell to throw. Deep to Everly. Duncan Robertson. Doug Bruce. Looking for Mitchell, his Canterbury teammate. And the match is over. The match is over. I guess the question that we all asked ourselves after that series was, why had we gone? We'd put up with a lot of flat getting there. And I guess we'd gone there to, to play sport but I don't reckon that we were really given a sporting chance. The referees were, without question, the worst that I'd ever experienced. The team had had some difficulties. We were without two capable fullbacks. The retirement of Joe Carroll had certainly been a bother to us. And I guess the, the only good part of that too was the fact that we were able to leave. Going into the, the Springbok series, I was well aware of the importance of the series to New Zealand rugby. Uh, as far as being captain goes, I, I didn't really regard it as, obviously an honour, but uh, I didn't regard it as, as a real problem, in that I had a very experienced core of, of players around me, the likes of Andy Hayden at lock, Dave Loveridge at halfback, Stu Wilson in the backs. So I was very fortunate that I had that assistance to call on. The battle inside Lancaster Park gets underway as the ones outside continue. These All Blacks have had their ups and downs in recent years, but at least they've got their goal-kicking problems sorted out. And a Springbok called Nas Burta is going to make them glad they have. So today's referee, Laurie Prito, begins the match. Down towards one for South Africa. Look out for the Nas Burta drop kicks. New Zealand the team will have to be careful not to offend. There goes the drop kick. It's wide and Fred Woodman is across. No, it's Bernie Fraser, left wing. 
Jaden beats Bullman that time. That's Stockberg looking for support. He's got it from Eddie Becker, just 10 metres out. Down and up, the referee was involved. It's back for the drop kick from Borta. And that's the first points on the board, and Borta has done it again. Nas Borta puts the Springboks into the early lead. by number one John Ashworth leverage the narrow side he had space to move popped it up for Hayden who went looking for support got dumped by Stockberg leverage finding Rollison to Jefford to Wilson with McKechnie up McKechnie threw it at halfway this is Serpentine leverage going back Dalton's got the hook, next dead off. Loveridge to Rollison. He's in, he's in. Deflected for Loveridge. He's got Stockberg at the same time. Rollison crashing into Serpentine. Ken Stewart with him. Roller and Loveridge, the blind side. Into Gary Knight, lost. Becker has it. Next it held back there, it looked like. Referee Prudhoe was not in a good position to see. Stewart, away to Wilson. Stu Wilson. That's a try and a brilliant one for the flying Wellington centre. Well, there's a lot of obstruction at the back there between Maxted and Lowe, but then it was Ken Stewart that was there. The ball seemed to be kicked through by Jeffert, and Stewart picked it up, but Jeffert was in front of him. Now, watch, watch Stewart Wilson. That's the same sort of try he scored against Scotland, but two Springboks were converging, but he had the pace and the strength to go over for the try. Oh, what a fine player, Stewart Wilson of Wellington. Rollison has the kick at 8-3. to three. It's handy enough for possibly two more. Serpentine as the Springboks win it. Borta running it. Billy Duplessis to Danny Serba. Ray Mort. No, that's Serba. Good chance here. Which way the bounce is going to go? Serba trying to put it in field. And a good counter attack led by number 13. And there he is, Danny Serba. So Becker looking for the preps to jump here with, with him. The Springboks right in attack. Loveridge has it, backing into trouble. Someone's down. Well, Mark Shaw was involved in something there with this man. Let's look again. Look for Mark Shaw. Pulls him. And then there's a bit of a swing and a big right hand from Mark Shaw. Serpentine, way to Porter running it again. Kerber, Pina up. Now Fred Woodman, if he can get the bounce, has trouble. Woodman into the center where Dalton is. Ray Mort. That's coming down to where Rollison has it. Crunched in a good tackle by Janssen. Stockberg and Loveridge. Run is being played. Rollison keeping the heat on. Pino under it looking into the sun. And that is half time. The whistle going from referee Laurie Prudeau of England and New Zealand with tries by Rollison and Wilson. Referee Laurie Brito begins the second half and Nas Porter kicks off with New Zealand having a seven point lead at half time. Here's John Ashworth and he's ruled offside. Line outs in the first half finished at 11 each and cleanly won ball. And that'll be pretty good encouragement for New Zealand. Twisting and turning now. Bullman 
Hoffman is there to help. Looks like Henry's been tired of all that forwards arriving. We have the old shot come out from the terraces here at Lancaster Park. The heave. It's there. This is Rob Lowe. Away to Darius Porter. But it's a forward pass. Mixed in, nearly got it. Ken Stewart has it to Shaw to mixed in. Thrown down right on the line. Mark Shaw. Try number three for Mark Shaw. Well, after that great kick from Dave Lovett, the ball went with a moment tap. Now, what's how the action starts now where the All Blacks are going forward, the Springboks and all sorts of Ray Kenny Stewart with the headband. Mark Shaw there with the burst inside now mark shaw gets up watch mark shaw he's down on the ground now suddenly the ball rolls out to him no one there and over for the try shaw scored it in combination with the other two loose men murray mexton and ken stewart serpentine water running the ball curve up Ray Mort, Duplessis, Woodman, 22 Fred Woodman, to Andy Dalton, down and dumped it and up, that's Ken Stewart with the ball there, good one for the All Blacks to win, now Rollison with the drop kick, and again a miss. Becker going high, Woolman taking it. Serpentine, Porter, Ken Stewart grabbed at him. The kick knee coming in with a great catch, just like an Aussie rule footballer. Loveridge to Rollison, hooking it back in like a basketballer to Wilson. see now Danny Kerber up over halfway what a great move Danny Kerber the man inside of his Stuart Stockberg out to the 22 and he's rolled it ahead Borta won't be a try there as Fraser comes across on Borta Loveridge Casey Pina back Ray Mort oh a punch up now in midfield Fraser's involved. And this is bad indeed. Darius Porter came in and dropped someone from behind. And that is bad, bad business. The Springboks have been pretty brave towards the end here. Porter running it. Danny Kerber. Lockie Cameron hanging on. Now Ray Mort swinging a good pass. It's a moment. And it's Henny Becker that got the try. Well, South Africa deserved a try. They had been de deprived of three tries by uh, almost bad luck. And then it was Kerber that started. Now the play comes to the right, and then big Henny Becker, the one Rob Lowe, starts to come into the play there. Now on the right, when... Mort is just tackled round the top by Gary Knight. There's number four, big Henny Becker, and he had the power to get over in the corner for the try. So it's all on for the kickoff. South Africa must throw caution to the wind. Even Janssen with the ball. He's well covered. Here's Mulman, Serpentine, Porter. A kick is needed. McKechnie. Calm as usual, puts it out. Referee looking at his watch. The match is over. McKechnie put it out. And New Zealand have won. Holding off a strong point back in the last few minutes by the Springboks. And the battle is over. 20 minutes into the first test, I knew we had a real battle on our hands. The sheer physical size of the opposition was probably the most important factor in the whole series. 
we knew that there was no way through, we had to find a way around. For the second test, the Springbok selectors have made seven changes to a losing side, no less than six of them in the forwards. But the danger man for Andy Dalton's All Blacks is still the fly half called Nas Burta. Everything is set and Nas Burta begins the second test after the whistle from referee Clive Dawling and this is Alan Hewson who returns the first ball to touch against John Ashworth. The hook has gone to Dalton. Loveridge away to Doug Rollis in the first 5-8. This is Casey Pino. He hasn't found touch. We had a lot of that happening in the first test. Alan Hewson running it wide. Finds Stu Wilson trying to crash the centre. That was a good tackle by Karts and one other South African player. There's Serpentine to Vainan Klaassen to Pinar up. The 22 approaches. This is Stoffberg. A great run. Hewson missed the tackle, but Cameron got his. And Serpentine is near the corner. And Fraser. And Fraser was a cross covering. And Flippy van der Merber looked at. Dangerous. Great move by South Africa early on. Replacement hooker Robert Costle throws to Div Fisser. To Border picked it up nicely to Derber. And here's Pinar up to Jenny Herbersheis. The defense is across. But oh, that's a fine try. And Herbersheis signals his return with a great try in the corner. Well, a simple move from South Africa. The skip move from Kerber missing out to Plessy and Casey Pina into the back line, giving the overlap on the left to Kerry Kermerheis. Kermerheis had too much pace out on the left and went over to score just in from the corner flag. The All Blacks didn't charge it. It was obvious to them it was handy enough, and that's 12 0. Well, the South Africans says that looks like good for Oosthuizen. Serpentine, very crisp pass, Gerber, Pino is up, Dupacy left out, Gerber's Hayes beating Woodford on the outside again. Oh, Wilson's going to hurry it out. More untidy ball for Loveridge. And half time is called in the match. The match will restart from the 22 with a quick kick by Nas Porter. Out to Ray Maud, loose ball. Under there, Stuart Wilson having a rare run. He's well caught. Loveridge. All Blacks are fighting back here. Rollison. Men inside him. Loveridge. Dummy. Wilson. Cameron. Forward pass. Seven metres from the South African line. Turn, New Zealand has turned it. For 18 6, 16 minutes, second half. And the decision by Dalton was well worthwhile. 18 to 9. Out of midfield in front of the posts. Down for 17. Back to border. Drop kick coming up. And three more points for last quarter. Cameron, Loveridge, and Rollison. Now Woodman got a high ball. Wilson's inside him. Ken Stewart there. Just a few metres out. And when the ball was clear, Borta kicked it away. And Rollison and Borta have had a great competition in this series. Rollison being spoken to. Unfortunate way for the match to come to its conclusion as it has with the Springboks delighted with their 24 to 12 win there are the two architects of it Bain and Klaassen the captain but Nas Border mostly with five penalties one drop goal and one conversion for 20 points we were shattered at and the end of the game our tremendous advantage that we've got in Christchurch has been destroyed the Ian Kirkpatrick's words did we have to lose one to make us play well were ringing in our ears while anti-tour protests rage outside and even overhead, the two sides come together for the crucial tiebreaker.
New faces for New Zealand include Steve Pacari and Gary Wetton, while Stu Wilson moves back to his rightful place on the wing. No one on either side's ever going to forget this day. Going into the, the third test with one, one test each, uh, we all knew how important this, this game was going to be, probably the most important game any of us would ever play. And it, the game has begun by Doug Rollison, who kicks straight to Nas Porter, South Africa's man of the tour. And his first kick for touch has not found it. David Loveridge, the New Zealand halfback, kicks high. Borta's under it again. Fraser on to Borta. Loose ball. Serpentine. Great beginning by the All Blacks. Right on the goal line. Dalton throws. Mexted palms. Gary Knight. Whips it back to Loveridge. A big blind side. Loveridge getting up, scrum. There's Henny Beckett, who came into the team for Tion Stoffer with the knee injury. John Ashworth on the left. You can see the great difference in size. Becker to Ashworth. New Zealand has good ball this time. Rollison, a high one. Pinar at the 22. Lockie Cameron has him. He lost the ball. Loose. Old is there, number six. Loose ball. Dalton, the captain. You can see the flower bombs are landing very close to the action there. Nine minutes gone, New Zealand in the lead. He's hit it well too. And that's a great goal by Nasporta. Doug Rollison looking skywards just before that kickoff as the plane is, continues to circle the ground. But the game goes on, and it must be distracting for the players. Very low when it comes over. Loveridge away to Pocchetti. Handles for the ball. First time in Test Rugby. Houston up and through a chance for Wilson. Wilson pulls it down. What try. And the game goes on. Next it off to Loveridge. Nicely for Wilson, who's got the bounce, and a head-high tackle by Porter. But uh, Wilson was offside, but uh, Porter's the one the crowd is venting their fury at at the moment. Bain and Classic called out, look at uh, Wilson, the head-high went in. A real coat hanger job. 23 minutes gone. jumper there next they've got his hand to it now next it plays halfback off to Shelford Shelford going right into the eye of the storm old plays halfback away to Doug Rollison for a high drop kick attempt Pina touching down six minutes to go until the halftime break palm back for Loveridge to Rollison to Pocari, to Cameron. Low, didn't quite get his man, rolled back. Hayden carrying it on. 15 metres out, Loveridge to Rollison. To Fraser. Next Eddie nearly got across. Off of there, but a try. Well, Murray Mexted made the drive. Now, you watch now, just short of the line. Now, there he pushes it back. Now, did Frank Shelford knock the ball on? I think he did. But Shel there went to Dave Loveridge. Bernie Fraser looked like he was going to get the ball, but Gary Knight, with that strength and weight, just pushed his way over for a good try. Rollison, just a little variation, popped it into space. Paul Kelly, has got the bounce. He couldn't quite get a pass away. Now Mexted at the 22. 
into Rollison. That's the goal line there. Nas Porter behind the goal line, drops it down, touches it down. Oh, that's half time. Well, we didn't quite get started there after that. And that is half time in the match. Second half begins with Nas Porter's kick. Low and flat to Stuart Wilson, who scored the try in the first half. Remember, he got three tries. 17. Water. Colin Beck. It's already looked good as, since he's come on. And now it's a chase here. Mort and Hewson. And I think Mort got there first. Mort did get there. He got there in the end. A try for Mort. He definitely got it the second time. I don't know, Graham. I think he might have got it the first time, too. And that's made it interesting. 16 to 9. There's the, one of the attendants taking away one of the flower bombs. Thrown, dropped from an aircraft circling the ground. Eunice to Ray Mort, who's already got the try. Houston coming across. Awkward bounce. Oh, and Mort's got the bounce. That is it again. Well, the perfect little kick coming out to the right. Now, watch Ray Mort when he gets the ball. He puts the little kick ahead, runs through now. It's a very awkward bounce. Houston couldn't quite get to it. Polkiri came past in uh, self-defense almost. But Mort was there, took the ball and scored the try. Water with the kick. A dramatic test match. Could close it up to just four points. And he's done so, of course. What a kick. He's golden it. And that's right up to one point the difference. The New Zealand player Gary Knight was struck by a flower bomb and it knocked him over. He's just got to his feet again. And you can see Gary Knight was struck by a flower bomb dropped from the plane. Now, I guess that would be a tremendous thump. There's Dalton, the captain of New Zealand, with his opposite number, Robert Cockrell. Cockrell throws. Becker made a great jump. Now they're running this one, as they did in Christchurch late in the game. Kerber trying for a way through. Shelford catches it, and oh, back he goes. New Zealand forwards piling in. Could be a drop kick for, uh, for Rollison. And he at last has stabbed one over. It's got to be a try. A converted try to win, a try to draw. Porter. He's got the bounce. Mort. That's the try. 22 all. Ray Mort's third try. Well, they had it all worked out. You watch now as Nas Porter. There he is now. He's running across field, looking for the dummy. He didn't even dummy. Out to Beck. He took the tackle. The ball went loose. Now, here's where it happened. A little kick through from Nas Porter. Across they come, just tackled, still keeps on his feet, outside to Mort. He's got Dave Lovers in defence, but he went too high, was pushed off, and the try was scored five metres from the corner. That's the 22. A penalty back at the mark, a penalty to New Zealand. So five minutes into injury time, Alan Houston has a chance to win the series for New Zealand. And he... I remember looking at the scoreboard, time up on the clock, 22 all, and both are taking a shot at goal. The All Black team ran to try and charge the kick down, and I remember after seeing it miss as we were running back to halfway, that both are amongst us, Bernie Fraser ran past him and said, so that's why they call you the golden boy. Clashes against the Springboks are pinnacle for most All Blacks. 
If they don't compete in the future, it just won't be the same. The All Blacks against the Springboks. Whether there'll ever be another series is impossible to say. At present, the odds are against it. But if there is, one thing's certain, the entire rugby world will be watching. Thank you.